Hi guys, I'm Mark Walker and welcome back to Switch Up. Let's clear something up. It's a well-known fact, as we all hear quite a lot, that the Nintendo Switch has no games. So, there it is. Just don't buy one. There aren't any... What? Huh? Doom on the Switch? Jog on sunshine? That can't even run on a... Huh? Oh man, come again, Wolfenstein on Civilization? But I thought that wasn't even out on PS4 and Xbox. That's the touch screen though, isn't it? How does that even run? Warframe on Switch? Now I know you're having a laugh. I bought a new PC for that game and it still laughed in my face and left me weeping over a burnt out graphics card. Will it be like five frames a second and look like a mechanized turd? Let's find out. Now, just a disclaimer, all footage will be from very early in the game as the Switch version is literally only just out, so no panic in terms of spoilers. It's a well-known fact to us in the PC community that the story in Warframe is very much like Fight Club, i.e. you don't talk about it. I can tell you the story is emergent and requires the player to often seek it out to progress. It is full of mystery and intrigue and with the necessary perseverance will reward your friends and you hugely. I'm a big fan of story feeling a part of the experience rather than simply on the rails and a snore fest. Plunged into a difficult situation to begin with, you're introduced to some key characters, but things grow so far beyond these initial introductions. Built on solid foundations, the story has evolved since the game was originally released. As part of the Lotus Clan, masters of these titan-like Warframe suits, you know almost nothing of this at the beginning of the game. I can't lose another Tenno. I'm searching the Warframe's power system. and it becomes more fleshed out as you travel through the galaxy assisted by your trusty AI companion known as Ordis. The dialogue from whom is top notch and crafts a very personal tale between you both. Operator, you have returned. I am Ordis, ship Cephalon, a shadow of my former self. I cannot serve the operator in such a condition. Order me to self-destruct, I will understand. There were several moments that made me laugh out loud. What I can say about the story is that everything you do is linked to a mysterious fallen empire. What's most satisfying about it is that the player is able to discover almost everything if they persist. If you're left scratching your head after the inevitable thousand hours of play, then likely you missed some nuanced detail provided. But it is there to be actively discovered and pursued, which I loved. It keeps you wanting to go on, which in games such as this is no easy task. Story is the perfect, not gonna hold your hand type experience, where a dedicated player may experience far more than one who simply expects everything on a plate. Some may find that the required investment on their part is a little bit too time consuming and taxing, but I loved it. It scores 18 out of 20. Get ready because you're about to enter one of the best combat systems in any game. To say that Warframe's control system is good is a gross understatement. Unfortunately, my early level character has none of the bells and whistles of the latter game on PC. But needless to say, the game will turn you from a mere mortal into a bullet dodging, wall running, unstoppable ninja. Throw in a few friends and this is also quite possibly one of the best co-op games on Switch. Controls are as you would expect with the analogs used in the traditional third person shooter format with a few tweaks such as the ability to melee enemies up close, wall run, fire your current weapon of which two main styles are available early, I'm obviously a Walking Dead fan so bow and arrow was the only choice for me and the ability to slow time is a delight and the havoc physics look great as you send enemies sprawling in all directions. Now, while the game has an incredibly deep number of systems to learn, it's worth persevering. As a word of warning though, especially at this late stage, you may feel a little overwhelmed when you first jump into the game. All I can say is keep going as the rewards are tenfold. Whichever of the starter suits you choose, it has a large impact on the game, but you essentially have one character that you build over time. This can mean you spend a few hours busting out some of the earlier quests, feeling a little lost, but gradually you get into the groove of completing quests, increasing the level of both your weapons and frame, and expanding the play areas by also unlocking further planets and regions, which are varied and still give me that Mass Effect feeling which I love. I can't describe it. It's as if these are actual places that could exist on some faraway planet.
At the risk of massively oversimplifying, you are leveling on two fronts. Firstly, through your mastery rank as you build your affinity, you're given mastery tests, which must be passed. There are over 20 of these if I remember rightly, it's been a while since I played the, the PC version. And when you inevitably fail one, you have to wait for about a day before you can try again. Yep, 24 hours real time. This gives them attention and importance you just don't get in many leveling systems, as you'll need to pass some for certain weapons and gear etc to be available. It all just feels important. The second system in place is equipment rank and as the name suggests indicates the level of a piece of gear. These can be raised through 30 levels and include your frames, the gun you're holding. It's an incredibly deep but rewarding system. Now the frames I referred to before are the titular warframes which are essentially specially engineered flight suits through which you gain a number of skills and abilities. I think the game has around 34 of these. Don't, don't, don't hurt me if I'm wrong and I won't even go into the stand and vanilla and prime versions. All you need to know is that you aren't limited to the beginning frame. So don't worry too much if you aren't completely happy with that first choice. New frames will become available as you gather the various bits needed to make them, which is an important point. This is not a pay to win game. In fact, for all my time playing the PC version, I've only put money into the game because I wanted to support it, not because purchases were basically essential to do. Let's be honest, we've all seen too many of those recently. Here's looking at you, for those like myself wanting to support the devs, you can buy frames for plat, which is the currency here, but like I said, totally optional. Now, the game is nothing like Monster Hunter at all, but a parallel I do find are the loadout systems. Take a mission that requires you to use long-ranged force. You can customize a loadout on your ship to then make the whole process of prepping quicker and easier. The arsenal setup includes far more customization than these, but needless to say, you can really tailor these builds to how you want to tackle a particular mission. A game like this can live and die on its weapons. I wouldn't say this was the case here, but that's most likely because the developers have nailed a great selection. Rifles, bows, shotguns, launchers, and as you know my favourite, the sniper rifle are all here. You choose a primary and secondary and then add in a close range melee weapon such as blades and whips etc. Each weapon has various damage types that again become incredibly complex and deep systems in their own right. But initially, for you new players, just concentrate on learning about the status effects and damage types as you play. If I go too far into them, your head's gonna explode. Now if you're an RPG fan, then obviously things like freezing and burning will make a huge difference depending on the enemy you're fighting. Gameplay is incredibly tight and refined at this stage. I can tell you it wasn't always this way. This is one of the few developmental teams who have worked continuously to improve the experience and it has seen many revisions since its initial launch. As you cruise around in the ship, the orbiter, which acts as the hub area from which missions are undertaken, just let the game gradually teach you these systems. Don't panic if you don't understand everything, get a few friends, and just enjoy the immersion it provides. Spend hundreds of hours farming parts, build up some frames, create your favorite builds, and then strip them down and rebuild them. Just don't give up. Of course, the experience is not perfect, and as is the way, repetition is something that comes with the territory. We'll chat in a few months though, and you'll tell me it was worth the effort. Gameplay scores 18 out of 20. Someone just clarify for me how this is even possible. Many people actually laughed when the idea of Warframe on Switch surfaced. Ah, oh, it's gonna look like absolute rubbish. There's no way a tablet will run a game that literally burnt my graphics card out. The compromises will be huge. Wrong, wrong on every count. Let's get the compromise out early. The frame rate is 30 frames per second, but the motion blur actually makes it feel a lot smoother than this. As a PC veteran, I can tell you that yes, there's a noticeable drop in frame rate, but it really does play well. Shockingly so. I just personally love the 60 frames per second the PC provides. Still, for new players, you'll be blown away. This is quite possibly the best port I have ever seen in terms of visuals and audio and the technical constraints in place. I just, I don't really understand it. 
Animations are on point, and while some of the source models aren't exactly groundbreaking, especially today, everything holds up well. Some textures look a little muddy, but again, far better than I thought possible. The AI is mostly good, sometimes flanking you or finding another route, but at others it falls down a little. Audio has always been a strong point, I'm going to let the game do the talking here. Overall, audio scores 17 out of 20 for me, and those visuals are top notch. They score 18 out of 20. The fact it's on Switch though is just downright insane. I could easily give it 20, but that wouldn't, in my opinion, reflect the actual visual quality, but rather the incredible ability of the developers. The game retails at £0 in the UK and the equally impressive price of $0 in the US. A little steep if you ask me, but it will do. Now, dad jokes aside, the game allows you to spend money and guess what? I think you probably should. Yep, you heard me right. They deserve it. They really do. To absolutely nobody's surprise, value scores 20 out of 20. A game like this could only exist with the love and dedication of many individuals over an equal number of years. Warframe is a brilliant game and scores 91% and it's free. I can't, man, kick them, whoever they are, off your Wi-Fi and download it. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya.